My name is Joshua Thomas Gordy. I am a voice actor, digital artist, and entrepreneur, and I am excited to be on the Keith Andrew Network. It is an honor to be featured on this show, as I feel you do a fantastic job of promoting a message, using your gifts to find success while facing adversity, that no matter the odds, if you work hard enough, you will find your voice. Hey, my name is Keith Andrew, and thank you for supporting the Keith Andrew Network. We're now available on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. For people who want to know what is the Keith Andrew Network, the whole point of my talk show is to show you that even with having a word and disability, I can sell them out to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities and never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. So prove them and stem out to something. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Keith Engine Network available on all social medias. Make sure to follow the hashtag, hashtag Keith Andrew Network, and make sure to like and subscribe. My guest, it's a great guest, only here on the Keith Andrew Network, exclusively on the Keith Andrew Network. He already introduced himself. So with that being said, 28 minutes, almost 29 minutes, freedom speaks, self-expression. You can say anything you want. I have no cards up my sleeve. Let's have fun with it. The first question I want to ask you is, tell our audience a little bit about yourself. Oh, for sure. Uh, for for those of you who don't know me, um, I am a professional voice actor from Michigan. I'm best known as the voice of Buzz, the lifeguard dinosaur from the mobile game Brawl Stars. Uh, that's by Supercell. And you may also know me as Pablo the Gorilla from the kart racing game the carters and the carters 2 turbocharged by uh pixel edge studios i'm also the bug teacher on a youtube animated series titled mad town as well as a few background characters in a short animated film called monkey and cat by arg cartoons uh, but yeah, I uh, started uh, my voice acting career. Um, I actually attended my first Comic-Con in 2015. And uh, that's when it when it started uh, mostly for me. Um, where I was in my life at that point was I, I was I was uh, I was actually a floor manager at a uh, at a, a fabrication place. And uh, but I was I was like living someone else's dream at the time. And uh, I really, I was in a really bad spot. Like I didn't really know where I was going in my life. Like I didn't really finish college or, or anything like that. I, I struggled in high school, uh, middle school. And like, I just, I didn't, I didn't have any motivation to do anything. So I just basically followed the path. And uh, I got to the point where I, I just, I wasn't happy with anything. And my wife, she got me tickets to Comic-Con, which honestly, I didn't even think it was even a good idea at the time, which because I was just like, why do why, why do I care, you know? <laughs> but uh, it ended up the whole experience ended up changing my life because uh, well, I didn't really, I wasn't there was I didn't go anywhere get, go there to that specific one to see anybody in particular, so I I just looked through uh, all of the people who were going to be there, and uh, I I focused on Billy West, which is uh, one of the pictures I shared with you. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, I was looking through his resume. I was just like, as dawning on me, all of the voices that he did, I was like, I, I love Futurama. <laughs> you know, like he, he voices like half of the characters on there. He's Fry, he's Zoidberg, he's the professor, uh, he's the red Eminem. Uh, he was Shaggy in uh, the Scooby Doo on Zombie Island, uh, just that one movie. And, dude, I was like, I was just getting so impressed with this dude's resume just um and then i i listened to the q a and he was like he's super inspirational he's talking about the uh recording the um the old m m co uh commercials with the santa claus and stuff and and like and then i went and saw him and i had a really good conversation with him and uh yeah and then on the way home i just decided that was going to be the path i was going to pursue and then when i got back to work the the guy i was talking to the shipping guy about it and turns out 
his dad's a voice actor. I'm like, okay, apparently these guys are everywhere. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, um, you know, he, he gives me his information. And then uh, I end up calling him like he's he was an audiobook guy. That dude's uh, Jack Bear was the dude I ended up running into. Um, and yeah, he talked to me and then he ended up inviting me into a voice acting guild for the local area around me. And uh, I ended up attending uh, one of those meetings. And then I, I met my uh, voiceover mentor there. And it, it was just everything lined up in like the next two weeks. It was just like, I, I decided that was what I was going to do. I found motivation. I got out of my rut. And then and now I was attending meetings you know, all within two weeks. It was like definitely some, some kind of divine intervention. The, the, the universe was, was guiding me in this direction. It was super, it, it was, it was a wild feeling. And I didn't stay at that job that I was, I was in a rut at like, I left like immediately. And I was like, I'm going to be a voice actor for, and then, you know, at, of course that didn't work out right away because it turns out you got to work, you got to put it in the work. You can't just like quit your job. And like, I was like a nobody at that point. You know, so I, I had to get another job. But like at that point, that was the first dumb mistake that I made was just like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to you know, just just up everything and just decide that this is my path now. It's going to work out. Um, but, yeah, I, I got a really good job for, for in the meantime, which actually it ended up working great because the next job that I ended up going into was um, kind of like a, a, a smaller company. It was a bigger company, but the, the division was really, really, really like new. And uh, I was able to grow with that division and, and kind of learn how to be a, a small business owner, but at the same time, not really be in danger of going out of business because we were part of this parent company who was, you know, keeping us, was like, Hey, are you guys okay? You know, you're here to learn, <laughs> you know, and it, it was, it was a great experience, you know, and, and that, and that grew into this huge thing, which I was super proud of for a long time. And then and during that time, I started actually getting voiceover work because I was doing that on the side. Uh, funny enough, my, my, my first time I was in the Carters as uh, Pablo, the gorilla, I printed and faxed them my voiceover contract while at that job. <laughs> <laughs> like while, like, while the boss was upstairs in his office, I printed off all the paperwork and stuff, did all the, the, uh, and then faxed it off to another country. <laughs> and then like later on, I, I, I did the, the job in my, my home studio at the time and turned out fantastic, but yeah, uh, humble beginnings. <laughs> and then, um, and then I got the bug for a while, you know, I, I learned how to, to um, basically like I, I thought I knew how to run a, a small business from my experience with this job, because, you know, I, I grew with this company and it, it was different from any other job that I've ever had. It was actually a positive environment and it encouraged growth and it still does to this day. But like it, it kind of gave me some false confidence because the second time I tried to do uh, voiceover full time, it lasted about as much mo as long as my money would hold out because like I still didn't really have any networking experience at the time. And I was just really just kind of grinding and hoping that something will work out. But yeah, I was just like, I just need to dedicate all of my time to this because I've got it now. But the thing is like, I fall, I fell immediately on my face because like, I didn't think about insurance. <laughs> you know. And then my wife ended up getting sick and it, it sucked because I was sitting next to her while she was like in the emergency room trying to find like health insurance all over the internet. You know how reliable that is. <laughs> and so, you know, everything up to this point has been a really big learning experience. But in, in that point, I ended up getting the role of buzz from Brawl Stars. And that's been life changing. You know, like that's been such a huge experience because that's opened up so many doors, you know, like, but my, I have a character that's got memes 
you know yeah. i could i can look up the character on like when i'm in a chat room and i can just go to the gift section i'll just type in buzz and i'll just be like oh my gosh i got so many of this character and stuff it is super surreal and um yeah it's, it, it, and and not only that now i go back to comic-con and i'm like you know, I've, I've met some more people and stuff because you know, e- even throughout this experience, like I've been able to like muster up courage to like talk to people that I've looked up to and stuff. And and uh, one of the times it, it, it was uh, I was waiting in line to meet Chris Sabat, the voice of Vegeta. And um, I was talking to this dude who was dressed up as Van Helsing and he was talking about voice acting. And I was like, oh, man, I got the cool stories for them because like. You know, I, I got to be Buzz from Brawl Stars. And I was just like, dude, I wanted to talk to him about how like it was to be like directed and stuff. And the fact that we we talked about like adventure time and like, dude, the, like, dude, like I just wanted to share with this dude. Like, and then he's like, dude, wait, hold on. You're Joshua Gordy, aren't you? I'm like, bro, what the heck? Like, how did you know that? You guessed my first and last. And that's just kind of like when it hit me, like just how big that was. I was like, dude, how am I, is that going to happen to anybody else? Like, dude, this is like the first person I talked to. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, but yeah, like it's been super cool. Like I, I just watched the, the, um, the Brawl Stars World Finals over the weekend. Like it's a whole esport and stuff. I'm like, I can't believe I'm part of this. This is so cool. You know, so yeah, yeah, it's been super cool, and like, yeah, it fell on my face for a while. I had to go back and get another job and stuff because you know I didn't think about things like actually running a business or being a a, a solo business owner and stuff. Like all of the stuff that I just like, I took. I just thought I, I would be able to figure out on the way. Like, yeah, I'm yeah like. Yeah, it, it's 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 crazy out there, and and now I've I've got some good mentorship right now, which has opened up so many more doors. Like I get to work with a big entrepreneurs now, like from like all of North America, and it has been such an awesome experience. But yeah, it's it's it is crazy how things can uh, end up if you just if you just don't quit, and you just like I've been at this since like uh, since 2015, so like we're on like year eight or something now on this like this grand whatever the heck I I my following my dreams. Like, yeah, just, just keep going, keep going. And just like, keep believing. It's just like, like you, like you constantly putting out there with your show, like, you know, just, just keep putting in the work and you can do anything you can, you can put your mind to. Yeah, absolutely. And now with that being said, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back from the commercial break during that time, we will see some of your great pictures of celebrities that you got to meet. And when we come back, we're going to, Continue this calm season with Chris Sabbath when we come back. As we just start from that quick commercial break, some of the great people you get to meet, wonderful people, and a little shot to your family too. Your wife is actually a voiceover actress. She's more than welcome to be on the show. And maybe, hey, we can do a double interview. All right. Yeah, she had she was with she was a co-star with me in Monkey and Cat. And uh she ended up playing the, the little boy <laughs> for, for that one. Um yeah, one of the one of the kids in the uh, the grocery store that the characters run into. Actually, one of the things I you mentioned your cartoons that you worked on, and you mentioned being a meme. As you know, I don't know who created this, but I was thinking if you have a green screen, you can turn anything into a meme. If you and if you are allowed, you don't have to do this. Wouldn't it be funny if I had some of your characters? If they have a green screen, so while we're talking, they're also on the screen too. Hmm. Okay. 
because there's also I know they do this in other countries too, but I'm not computer savvy. But there's a T Rex where you're doing the, like you're talking, and the T Rex randomly appears on the screen. It's really cool. Oh, nice, nice. Where 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 it generates over over the face and and stuff like that. I have oh. seen those. Those are pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> But the question I want to ask you now, it's time for the Dragon Ball, because we talked about this off the air. When you continue in your story after you were talking to this person, what was the meetup when he met Chris Sabbath? Because I met him as well. But what was okay. your experience like? Well, the first time I met him, um, I actually met him twice. The first time I was a little bit more green in voiceover, and I really, really wanted to do um, uh network with him so you know i it was kind of awkward i i asked him for like i was like hey how do you get into uh voice acting and you know he was like oh yeah dude like dude you just gotta you know he gave me his card and he's like yeah i'm always looking for for people and and uh yeah it, it, it was cool like uh he, he was really welcoming and uh you know he's really laid back and you know, he, he, uh, he met my kids the last time that we, uh, we, uh, hung out or well, I met him at a Comic-Con and, uh, he was really cool with the kids. Like <laughs> he had this, my, my son was, was dressed as, uh, uh, Izuku Midoriya from My Hero Academia. And, uh, he had this whole conversation as, uh, as all my <laughs> talking to him. It was, it was so cool. Dude, Chris is, is so awesome. But yeah, what was your experience like? And then as we're talking, the video will actually to handle the show disabilities. We get to that in a couple minutes, <laughs> but don't mind me. I swear my words. I'm not drunk or anything. I suck at okay. first appearances, first impressions. So handle the show. But when I met Chris, I had my belt, and you can see in the picture. So a lot of people say, oh, it was a wrestling belt. I didn't want a WWE belt. I didn't want a wrestling belt because when I went, you can agree when we were younger, but, oh, I'm the WWF intercall champion. I'm best attack. Are you really, did you really earn that? And I mean, okay. Yes. It's great to have your head way up your ass in this fantasy world. But I give you an example. I had to bring that up. My family thinks it's funny. Because I made a trophy for myself. So the joke is trophy for me. Obviously, when you make okay. a trophy, it has to be given to you. But at the right. time, I wanted to com commemorate the 10 years of my talk show. Well, at the time, five years. And so I made myself a trophy. And <laughs> it's kind of like you're defeating the purpose of making yourself a trophy. So... That actually fell apart, and in the picture, I made my belt. It's a nice championship belt with the logo, Keith Angie Network. I said, okay. wouldn't it be cool if I met these celebrities and I asked them, can you hold my belt when we take a picture? And by holding the belt that says Keith Angie Network, you can now say, these people support me. <clears throat> so okay. when I went over to uh, Chris Sabbath, he said, I, I can't imitate his voice. I'm not even going to try. You know, I said, yeah, it's a real honor to meet you. I would love to be on your show. He really liked the bell. I told him, I'm a talk show host with a disability. I fall under the spectrum of being retarded. <clears throat> That's why I created my show. So right. in the picture that everyone sees now, watching the interview, he's holding the bell. It's like, I'm the champion of the world. <laughs> Awesome. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're you're good. I was saying that. That just that's so cool. <laughs> he was a, he's a nice guy. And why? Well, let me ask you. A lot of not to put you on the spot or anything. A oh, lot of good. people say you know he's the devil. You know, or he's hard to work with. You know. You know. I mean, okay. Look, I have a disability, and sometimes I'm hard to work with. Sometimes I do it on purpose. Sometimes, you know, I'm just me. It, yeah. it, but what, what was she, you, because you met him, you know, have you worked with him on any projects? 
Um, I haven't worked with Chris himself yet. Like I hope to one day, but I, I have talked to somebody like a couple of people who have, I haven't heard anything bad about working with him uh, or anything down that road at all. I've actually only heard good things <laughs> if I were being honest. No, I agree. And actually while we're talking too, there's a picture of Chris, I uh, almost said Chris Saf again, uh, Sean Schimmel. Hands down, it's the same thing. He did the champion of the world thing. <laughs> Very cool. I have so many projects I want to work with you on, and I would yeah. love to work with you. Uh, but the other question I want to ask you is, did you meet Sean Schimmel? I actually haven't met Sean Schimmel. That, that's on my bucket list, though. I would love to meet that dude. Um, my sister-in-law has met him, and so I do have his autograph on uh, something that she had him sign for me, but um, I haven't myself met him yet. And I hope to one day because he is awesome. I've, I've heard lots of interviews with him and like, dude, he just, he sounds so cool, <laughs> but yeah, I haven't met, I haven't met him yet myself. <laughs> now, do you ever cross to know, talk to you just real fast, but I want to ask you, you also are a graphics designer. And if I make you hesitate, Sorry, I have that effect on people. But oh, you, no, mentioned you're you're, you mentioned you're a graphic designer. But before you answer that, was there anyone on the Dragon Ball cast that you always wanted to meet? Of course, you met Chris Sabbath. But, you know, there's always Bowman, Chuck, and Joss. Uh, um, was there anyone who said, from the show, I have to meet? Obviously, you met the Prince. Oh, yeah. So I would love to meet uh, Sonny Strait. Um, I would love to meet Chuck Huber. I, I'd love to do I, uh, lots of them. Honestly, I'd love to meet, uh, Ray Hurd in, in real life. I've talked to him a lot, but, um, yeah, I've never actually met him in person. And then, uh, Cynthia Kranz and Linda Young, uh, is really an awesome person. I'd love to meet in person. Um, wow. There's, there's so many of them. Uh, Kara Edwards is awesome. I would love to meet her one day. Um, I did meet uh, Kyle A. Bear. Uh, he's super. I, he's in one of the pictures I sent. Also, um, he's he's super cool. But yeah, like I would love to meet like all everybody from that cast. You know, just so I can just like, like what was it like? Like, <laughs> did it hurt? <laughs> like, well, you know? If you want a good laugh, definitely. I woke out my Dragon Ball collection. Because I sat down with them. The reason I mentioned them is because I actually worked with them. I got Elise Bowman on the show. I got Chuck Herbert. Great guy. I got Kyle on. We did a fantastic interview about six, seven years ago. Unfortunately, we had to take it down because I said not anything that was wrong with the interview. I said, I, I'm going to ask you this question, but I want you to answer it in the voice of the character. Well, can you say... Uh, in the Ox King's voice. And he would. And he's like, yeah, I need you to take the down. I think fun reason will be really mad at uh, why is the Ox King doing this disabled person's talk <laughs> show? But he's a great guy. Um, Chuck Herbert, Fanta, we had a fantastic interview. So anyone go to Key Fangie Network, look up Chuck Herbert, Louis Spoman, Stephanie Anadi. Arnaldi, I probably got a buzzer that. That's why I don't pronounce people's names because I buzzer them. There's so many, but you are a graphics designer. Who influenced you and how many years have you been doing that? I actually started uh, graphic design in uh, high school. I went to a uh, tech center for half of my days uh, when I was a junior and a senior. Um, and that's actually where I met my wife too, is uh is this graphic design class and, and it was it's, it's mostly digital art uh what we would do we would we would create like the logos and stuff for like fictional companies we would make uh uh takeout menus um it's like it's anything i started i started a, a comic book for the uh for the um my 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 school's uh school paper it, it was a different school because it, i would i would go to my my normal school for the first half of the day and then this school for the second half of the day and uh, yeah, I would, I would make the, the comic for that. And then it just kind of blossomed into like, I created my own, um, my own company logo. Uh, I don't really do it a lot for um, 
I should, I should get into doing more commercial work uh, as far as uh, graphic design and stuff. Um, and, and that would help me practice too, because I'm also doing animation as well. I'm, I took some animation courses in uh, college and I did a couple of YouTube uh, shorts at one point. They got kind of lost to time because it was back in the early, early, early YouTube days. And, uh, but yeah, like I'm starting to get back into that again. And then I, I started uh, uh, storyboarding and animation. So um, eventually I would like to put, I'm putting together a pilot episode, a pilot animation. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting back into the digital art there, but mostly self-taught. I did a, did a lot of uh, uh, like the high school and some college. I did some art in college, but I've never done like full commercialized or anything. It's mostly just voiceover that's been commercialized. But yeah. Now, <laughs> now it's the last five minutes. I'm going to pass it over to you because I want this to be interactive. It isn't just one-sided. Was there okay. anything you want to ask me? Anything you want to promote? You can ask me anything. I have no cards on my sleeve. Yeah, I just thought, uh, so like, tell me a little bit about like, how, do, what, what motivates, what motivated you to get started with this uh, show? I have to make a long story short. I fall under the spectrum of being retarded. Of that, I mean, I could pass, and that's that's a, yeah. that's a compliment or anything. But that's why I say I fall under the spectrum. Um, make a long story short, I'm the youngest out of four brothers and one sister. My brother, I wish I had a dollar for every time I said this. My brother before me said, "I don't know what to do with my life. I don't know. I went to college. I have this degree. I can't use it for anything." And so my parents were like, go talk to your brother, go talk to your sister. They can point you in the right direction. I said, what about me? What about you? One, you piss people off. You don't shut up. You have diarrhea of the mouth. Uh, you constantly provoke people, not intentionally, but <laughs> you provoke people. <laughs> you're not educated and you're not qualified. So I said, screw it. I'm going to show you with a disability Look at what I'm able to accomplish and for 10 and a half years. You can see the progress. Look, look at the, look, the expression of the WrestleMania game uh, when it came out was bigger, better, better. <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> you can look at mine as saying, decent, okay, what the hell am I watching? <laughs> because you, sh you see a process from season one from – you know, holding up a camera from the reflex and to now having a split screen with the background. I don't have to decorate the background anymore. It, it's professional. I taught myself this 24-7 every day, 24-7, seven days a week, 365 days a year. I taught myself at a slow pace because if, for an example, when I was in high school, they used to give you multiple choices. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, what is the A, B, or C? Okay. Can you read it again to me? Okay. Oh, is it answer A? Is it B? Could you give me an example? <laughs> I'm not saying give me the answers. Can you give me an example what A means and what how A is different? Because I learn at a slower pace. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, you're <laughs> But... I'm the, anyway, it, it, it's, I talk to my hands. You know, we're going to make it wonderful. It's going to be one. We're going to make it better. But if you just take the time to sit down and just have some patience and you, you can learn, you can learn, you know, you can teach the old dog new tricks because you very patient. You, people in this day and age, you know, snap their fingers and they think if they're not getting it right away, pass on to the next one. I bet you when you did your auditions, people were like, either you're going to do it in the first 30 seconds or make friends with the door. Yeah. Yeah. You, it, it is a it is a grind. You are absolutely right. Like, 100%. Like, that's what it is. It, it's just, seriously, it, it's, it's obsessing. It's obsessing over what you want. And, and and you have gotten better, like that is definitely a progression. Like like you like you said, you started from a phone, and now you're now you have 
the uh, you have the background and everything and, and and this is what you do like yeah you're absolutely right like and you're over like a thousands of, you're over a thousand episodes into this in 10 years like, okay is, i have a, awesome i actually have binders full of ace now unfortunately I don't, i'm running, running out of space where to put them i know we need, a lot of people can make a joke about that but you're absolutely okay. actually episode 1066 1066 1066 nice <laughs> and that shows you if you have the heart and passion you can accomplish anything i do have a couple questions for you off the air we're going over time now oh you're good but wrapping up, it was a real honor and privilege. I mean, as a guest, I'm looking forward to part two. This will be aired on, let's we'll see if I can say it without hurting myself. LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. It will be shared everywhere on the top six. On the west side, find another website. <laughs> so the top six. Our goal is to reach a hundred and more views. Definitely leave a comment. I would like to interact with you. Joshua would like to interact with you. And that's all what it's about. Bringing people together, having a normal conversation, and making a new friend with that. With that being said, until we meet again, catch you later. Thank you. See you later. Thank you. Have a good night.